If I told you we could spend 3 million and we can make 60 million, would you want to do that? Let's say you made 10 ad campaigns. How do you figure out which one sucked? And we were in a meeting just a little earlier. Do you guys see that there is a big train wreck in Ohio? This derailment. huge pileup, yeah, the derailment, and there's like chemicals going everywhere and contaminating and poisoning people and the water is just nasty looking and there's this whole cover up going on. So we're running campaigns on that too. We're running Google ads. We're looking at our SEO. There's lots of stuff that can be confusing. Right, definitely. The, yeah. There's a lot of metrics that go into the system for sure. So today I want to talk about something that I've never heard anyone talk about outside of what we talk about. Okay. And it's this, how do you optimize? Of all the things that you could do, of all the campaigns and the initiatives that you have going on, of all the content that you've created, let's say you've made one minute videos and done all the stuff Mark and I and other folks are talking about. Let's say you've, you've done all these things. You've listened to all these gurus. You've bought all these tools. You've made your tweets and your TikToks and your YouTubes and your click funnels. You've done all these things. But then what? Then you have to be able to optimize. That is the thing that I believe is the most important thing we need, besides like having a clear vision and knowing your why and that kind of stuff, more that that soft stuff. But in terms of making money, you've got to know how to optimize. Amen? So today I want to talk about this framework that we call metrics analysis action. And I think you're going to find that it's an eye-opener, but it may also be embarrassing or confusing because I see a lot of people, they're starting campaigns. There's something fun about just creating some new stuff. Right. But then let's say you made 10 ad campaigns. How do you figure out which one worked? How do you figure out which one sucked? How right. do you figure out what to do next? So before we go dive in deep into this course, I'd love to hear you guys. What do you think about this topic? Have you struggled with it? Were you not aware of it? Is it something that you wanted to have? Are you just continuing to launch new things and never look back and try to optimize and analyze what's going on? What do you guys think? Feel free to just speak up, jump out, say something. Lainey says, need this, okay? And just feel free to say it to the group. And I want to see if you guys can put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and so instead of teaching the thing and then showing you something, I just want to put it out there and just see what you guys think, and then I'll explain it from the example, okay? So this morning, we had a meeting with to do PPC optimization with arguably one of the top digital marketers on the planet. And we're spending $100,000 a month for this one account on Google Ads for the personal injury attorney, like I was telling you about. And the is the spreadsheet that shows us how much money we're spending every day. So you can see here, we're spending, you know, $2,000, $3,000 every day. And here's how many impressions we're getting and how many clicks. So you could see, you know, if we're spending $4,000 on this day and we had 200 clicks, that's about 20 bucks a click. And we had 12 conversions, which is someone filling out a form saying maybe they got injured, right? But this conversion is a Google conversion. It's not actually a case. Because it could be a wrong number. It could be someone filling, you know, contact in the chat bot. It could be whatever it is. And then we have numbers like 2.6% CTR. And then the next day we spent a little bit less, but we had a 4.4% CTR. So it's very easy to think, well, look at all these numbers. And then some days it's up and some days it's down. And some days the cost per conversion is up or down. Here it's 370. Here it's 260. Here we spent less and here we spent more. And then it went back up and maybe it's the weekend. And so you could bounce around between all these different numbers and try to say, well, why is there three conversions here and 17 and 19 here and half a percent? And this is what happens in the world of analytics is you have some kind of mindless robot that is collecting data in some spreadsheet. And every day they fill out another row with more information, impressions and clicks and CTR and shares and likes and comments. And But let me ask you, what, what does this mean? I'm not asking this hypothetically. So here we have a CTR of 1.03%. And over here, we have a CTR of 1.87%. If I'm, this is real money. This is not hypothetical data. This is not some school assignment. This is real money that's being spent right now. I have, I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually show real data and break it down live. And we can do this in Google Analytics. We can do it in our Facebook ads and Google ads, we can do it in our email stuff and our HubSpot and people like anytime there's a bunch of data, we can break down what's going on. So I want you, I want to use this as one example to extrapolate into what is the difference between metrics and analysis? Because if you 
And don't worry if like you're not a personal injury attorney or you're not spending money on ads. This is true for all of us. This could be a list of our top posts on Twitter. This could be any set of data. This could be how much money we've made each day in the last year. It's any set of data. You're going to have this kind of format where you have these different metrics and they're broken out by the day or the customer or the region or the product they bought. This, this is what happens. This is called a grid, right? A spreadsheet, whatever you want to call it, right? When I look at data like this, or when you look at data, what, what do you think? What comes to mind? Just yell it out. You can yell it out. What do you think? You already know the answer, so you probably shouldn't say anything. Isn't this a common issue? You see just a wall. It's like a where's Waldo issue, right? You see all these numbers. Now, me as the boss, let's say, because I'm in charge, it's my ass because it's money being spent. So Daryl's holding me accountable for this money being spent. I don't care if you're spending $10 or $1,000 or millions of dollars. We're spending millions of dollars here. But I've got to be accountable. I have to figure out what the hell is going on here. What? I'm asking you guys, what is, I know you're not a personal injury attorney, you're, uh, this is not your area, but if you're just to look at this, tell me, what are you thinking? What questions are you asking? Can you hear us okay? Even Oh, audio issue, can you hear us okay? Still hear us okay? Okay, good. Just feel free to speak up. So Janet said, this is only talking about the cost of conversion. Where's the metric that tells me what these mean? Yeah. As far as the value of the cases, yeah, that's true. Because some cases are worth a thousand dollars, and some cases are worth ten million dollars. Like a big trucking accident, we had one that was ten million dollars. Says why so inconsistent on that one? Uh huh. Yeah. So Bally says, what are we measuring? We're, well, what we really want to measure is how many cases we're generating, and then the value of those cases. So if we spend a million dollars in ads and we drive twenty million dollars in cases, that's probably a good thing. But some cases are, you know, dog bites are not worth as much as trucking accidents and slip and falls are worth less because we fur those out versus like a general motor vehicle accident. Okay. Why so inconsistent? Well, that that's a good question. A lot of it's going to be seasonality. And the other part is going to be when you set PPC budgets, then Google will use those budgets until they're run out and then they'll it'll stop until that next period. So it could be a daily budget. It could be trying to spend the budget as quickly as possible. It could be seasonality. It could be cost caps. It could be based on optimizing to a cost per conversion. So the system's going to try to spread it out wherever it's going to get the best conversions. So those are all good questions. What else? Okay, so my CTR went from a 1.1% to 1.8%. So what? Is that meaningful? Is that noise? Is that worth anything? Most of the time, the answer to so what is it's nonsense. So the stuff I just showed you, the guy who shared that considers that analytics. And he wants to put someone who just fills out that spreadsheet every single day. You know, a VA could go and log into Google Ads and copy those numbers of how much we spent and how many impressions and whatever, and stick it on that spreadsheet and say, ta-da, here's our analysis. And then someone every day is just doing this and, you know, billing time, wasting money. Meanwhile, the faucet is running, spending $100,000 a month, and no one is paying attention to it. Just because someone's copying numbers into a spreadsheet doesn't mean there's any kind of optimization occurring. Because if there was any optimization, it would be brute force, hacksaw, kind of like, well, the spend went up or the spend went down. That's There's nuance in optimization. So here's the way to get around that. Instead of starting with all these raw numbers, which is trying to boil the ocean you know, to fry a fish, you start with the goal, the business goal. So what's our business goal? I want more cases specifically more higher case value, right? I would love to have 100 cases and I want to make $10 million, $20 million a month. And however much I have to spend to earn $20 million a month, if I spend a million and earn $20 million, that's probably okay. Yeah, but if I told Daryl, hey, and let's say I asked you this, instead of spending a million to make 20, if I told you we could spend 3 million and we can make 60 million. Would you want to do that yeah. each month? Of course you'd so. want to do that. So that it's not like I just want to spend less. I need to spend, I need to, you know, have a certain ROI, ROAS, kind of like what Dan was talking about. So we start number one is we start with that business metric. So anytime you're talking to a social media consultant and they're telling you about you can have a million likes and 10,000 followers, like that's garbage. That that's that's if it can't 
If it's not in the balance sheet, if it's not in your bank account, if it's not a metric you can actually see when you log into your Wells Fargo or whatever, it doesn't really matter, right? right? I can't log into Wells Fargo or Chase and see how many likes I have. It just, right. I'm sorry, if it were, I actually, I have a million followers. If you add up like Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all that. So if you start, number one, with that business metric, then uh, you can look at underlying metrics. This is what we call metrics decomposition. So imagine I had a whiteboard here and I was drawing it out. At the top, we have profit. And it doesn't matter what kind of product or service you have, you have to make a profit. Right. And what is profit? More money that you're making than you're spending. That's right. So it's it's the amount of money you're taking in minus how much your expenses are, right? Revenue minus cost. And then you can break down your revenue into different components, and you can break down your cost into different components. So at the very top, you have just one singular metric, profit. That's the only time in analytics you have a single metric because any other metric is in a pair, meaning there's at least two of them. It's like Noah's Ark. There's at least two of them. Why? Because anytime you have one metric and you optimize that one metric except for profit, there is always a counterbalancing metric. In other words, you can fool yourself. So if I said, hey, Jacob, I'm an expert optimizer. I'm really good at ads and whatever. I'm going to double the number of conversions you have per month. Would, you, would you like to do I, that? I'd say it's great, but where's how much money is it going to make me? Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to double the number of dog bites that you get. Okay. Yeah. Well, and your total case value is going to go down, but I'm going to double your conversions. I mean, yeah. I don't think that sounds very ideal of what I'm looking okay. for. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime you have one metric, there's always a counterbalancing metric. Can everybody put that into the chat? Type in counterbalance. This is the biggest issue I see when people are trying to interpret numbers is they look at one metric without realizing that there is a counterbalancing metric. The counterbalancing metric. Let's say that I'm running ads and I'm able to double my CTR. Wow, that's great. My ads are doing way better because I increased my CTR, right? And that's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's a good thing. But but, but there's a counterbalance. Right. So what's the counterbalance? For example, the CTR. There's lots of them that could be a counterbalance. Yeah. Um... Let's say, for example, I took your ads. And I doubled your CTR. And you're like, yeah, hooray, double the CTR. We look at the spreadsheet and we can see the CTR went up. But let's say that I said all services are completely free, right? Free, 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 free. Just click on the link below and fill out the form. It's all free. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to double the CTR. Right. But I didn't. But, but some other counterbalancing metric got hurt. Let's say I increased the conversion rate, right? Sure. Lots of ways to do that. I could reduce the price. I could reduce the number of fields that are there. I could change the targeting of the customers. I could target people who are not the right kinds of customers and, and fill up your lead pipeline with all kinds of unqualified people, but I increased your number of leads or I increased your conversion rate, right? Sure. So do you guys see how you must always have a counterbalancing metric? Always, always. Anytime you look at any numbers, I don't care if it's numbers in your calendar or whatever, there's always a counterbalance metric except for profit. Sure. Profit's the only one because profit then breaks into cost and expense. And then if you're optimizing your Facebook ads or analytics or what, like there's always counterbalancing. And once you see it through the lens of counterbalancing metrics, you'll never see the numbers the same. It's like in the matrix where I see the woman in the red dress. I don't see the green lines coming down the screen anymore. Yeah. I see, I mean, maybe I've been staring at a screen too long, Yeah. right? But I want you guys to think about it. <laughs> Here, let's go to another example. Just to show you, this applies anytime there's a bunch of numbers. This is me. I, I scored a perfect SAT, except I missed two questions in the verbal. I had a perfect math. I hey. competed in math competitions. I was number five in the nation in math counts. I flew around and traveled to math contests. I know. what We went to math parties on the weekend. You know what we did at math parties? What? Math. I can't imagine. We it did was math very problems. Fun. I can't imagine. <laughs> that was, it was great. It was great fun. because like whoever solved the most problems won the candy. That's what I did. I mean, that's I'm Asian. I'm good at math. <laughs> Okay. Look, we have another Asian in the room here too. All right. So now we're going to go and look at, an, <laughs> at at this client site. And this is Isaacs and Isaacs, the one we're looking at, we win. And I'm going to look at a set of numbers. Okay. I'm going to look at some SEO metrics just for fun. And I'm going to show you something. And we can look at any set of data. If any of you guys want to pull up a set of data, I'll apply it to you right now. Now I could say, well, we rank on 9,500 keywords. And the number of keywords we have, let's say it's gone up, you know, because we can see like this one, 
we rank number one on our name. We used to be number two. We moved to number one. And here, GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating. We move from position 14 to position 11, which is still on the second page of Google. That's where you hide a dead body, second page of Google. <laughs> and reefer. I thought reefer was like smoking a marijuana joint. I thought is that that's what, what the reefer term is? for that okay. was. I think that's yeah. a certain kind of truck. And you can see we moved from eight to four. And you know, so there's all all these num all these things that are moving up and down. And, and let's just say, for example, this is real data, okay? This is not some theoretical sort of thing. And the previous SEO agency said, hey, you know, our SEOs improved because we went from 8,000 keywords. Now we're ranking on 9,000 keywords. But remember, there's always a counterbalance metric, remember? So if the number of keywords we have is going up, like generally, that's a good thing, right? We're ranking on more keywords. Our SEO is better, right? As long as they're qualified. Oh, okay. Well, now if we look at what's actually driving the traffic, what we're ranking on, you see this? WeWin.com slash glossary slash glossary, gross vehicle rate, <laughs> slash glossary. These are all glossary, 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 glossary terms, okay? So if we look at this, look, oh, so I'm just going to go to one of these keys. So we always want to investigate a little bit further. What is a commercial driver's license, CDL prep and requirements? Now, remember, we started with the goal. What's the goal? Drive more cases. More cases. So more people who got injured, they got hit by a truck, the Amazon driver ran over their pet, whatever happened, right? Something, someone got hurt. And here's an article on the site. What is a CDL, commercial driver's license? Well, commercial driver's license is someone who runs, you know, operates a big bus and here's the requirements and ABC commercial driver's license and all this stuff. Like this is someone who writes, so someone who's, some kid who's writing an essay on how to become a whatever. It's a commercial truck driver. Or they, they want to become a, a they want to, whatever, they want to drive a truck. Mm -hmm. How likely, let me ask you guys, because we're all part of Mark Black's personal brand accelerator. How likely do you think it is that someone who comes to this webpage just got injured in a car accident or got hit by a truck? What do you guys think? We'll stop there for a minute. What do you guys think? Pretty low, huh, Art? So- why is that? But but where the number of keywords we're ranking on has been increasing. Our SEO is better, right? Synergy. Why do you say not likely? You can unmute if you want. Uh, because they're probably just searching to see if they can become a commercial driver. You mean they didn't get hit by a truck? You don't think they got hit by a truck? No, they didn't. It's not a trick question. Yeah, it's not. It's irrelevant traffic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but do you see how you could easily be snowed by someone else who claims to be an expert and they do the hocus pocus and what, you know, there's smoke and mirrors and all that kind of stuff. And they say they increased one particular metric, which sounds good. But anytime we see one metric, what's the thing we have to do? Counterbalance. Look at the counterbalancing metric. So somebody name a metric, and I'll tell you the counterbalance metric. You guys see that? Do you see how important there's always, like, I'll increase this one thing, but then wait, what about this other thing? Right. Goes For down, example, right? like the, whenever we were talking about the different classifications on the website, if I put um, motorcycle wreck or farming accident or something like that as keywords that are searching in a pulls up Isaacs and Isaacs, it's not going to develop any more cases. It might drive more click-throughs and more stuff like that because people are looking for someone that attends those events or helps with that process, but yeah, it's not the right qualifications. So we always go back to the actual business goal. Is it driving the business goal? And whenever we're trading quantity. So anyone who says, I'm going to increase the quantity, I'm going to give you more clicks. I'm going to give you more keywords. I'm going to give you more impressions. I'm going to give you more whatever it is. I'm always looking at the counterbalance. And the counterbalance is always qualitative. Anytime there's a quantitative metric, I'm looking at qualitative as the counterbalance. And once you have this, you will never be bamboozled again. Isn't that amazing? Even in areas that you don't know anything, like there's a bunch of, there's all these new AI tools and these guys are trying to sell me on all this kind of stuff. And they can try to hocus pocus me with all these words I don't know. But the minute I apply counterbalancing metrics, they can't bullshit me anymore because I'm tying it back to what I know, which is my business goal. <laughs> now it's up to them to prove it matters to my business goal. Right. You follow me on that? Okay. So what do you think about this idea so far? There's actually 10 different components of MAA, which is what we're talking about. We've covered just one, which is counterbalancing metrics. What do you guys think about this so far? 
Another example. Okay, Simrajit says, so in this case of CDL, would it show up as a Google result for someone simply looking yeah, for more, yeah, learn about CDLs? That is true. Yeah. We're getting more prominence in search results because we have a page about how do you get a driver's license or whatnot to drive right. a truck, but it's, it, it's not tied to our goal. So we're getting more quantity at the expense of quality. That's the problem. Right. That's what I want you to always see. Anytime you see some metric that looks good, always look for the counterbalancing qualitative metric. Yeah. What made this happen or what, yeah. what exactly? Yeah. I've done analytics professionally for 30 years and I can tell you this insight is rock solid to always look for that counterbalance metric. Okay. Now I'm going to show you this other sheet we were looking at and explain a second concept. So remember, we're looking here. Here's the number of days. And let's just say we fill out this other thing saying how many cases we got. So, you know, let's say we spent $3,000 and we had two cases, right? Then we spent $10,000 and drove five cases and whatever it is. And then we have the case value. And let's say that someone comes in every day and fills out this sheet and shows how many cases we got each day. And then someone, that uh, person also comes in and fills out how much money we spent on Google ads. And then maybe we added some more rows, how much money we spent on Facebook ads and TikTok ads and all that kind of stuff. And it's all right here in the sheet. Sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, that's, that's insufficient. Right. Why is that insufficient? That's too much going on all at one place. Um, not only that, but it's not, not reflecting the accurate results. There's all, there's no counterbalance there. There's zero counterbalance. So this is an example of pure metrics. So this part is, I'm about to explain the most common mistake when it comes to analytics. And this is one of those groundhog days. I've seen it happen so many times. If I had a dollar every time I've seen this in the last 30 years, I'd still be here with you guys because I retired 20 years ago. But it, it's it's one of those things that just, I don't even have any hair. That's how bad this is, right? I pull my hair out on this one. But I want to explain this key point. And Jacob is one of the few people that's actually passed. He doesn't know this, but I actually was quizzing him on this to see if he understood. So you never want to let people know when they're being quizzed because then they it adds pressure and then they... They behave differently when they know they're under scrutiny. But here's this. When we have people that apply to work on our company to do analytics or advertising or something that requires thinking, which is what all of us should require, I look to see if they understand the difference between metrics versus analysis. And what I just showed you in, all, in that sheet there is metrics. Metrics is just lots of numbers. And a lot of people, they believe that if they just show lots of numbers, that that's the same as having analysis. Analysis is, what is analysis? Analysis is just the actual ability to see the results and kind of see what things that you're needing to work on, what things aren't working, um, the exact, how to proceed forward with the information. It's not just what the information is and what it did and how it grew my business. Well, I did A thing and then B thing and it grew me by X dollars. Well, that's what the metrics are, but it's not really the analysis portion. Right. So in order to have analysis, I've got to link together cause and effect. So the fact that I showed how much money we're spending and how many cases we have, that doesn't tell me cause and effect. It doesn't tell me directly that me spending money on Google ads directly drove these particular cases. And then optimizations that I made because I turned the budget up, I changed the keywords, I optimized my ads, I changed the creative, I you know did whatever that that directly led to me getting more calls, which then led to more cases. Right. Yeah, so that's right, David. Meaningful info to improve profit. Laney said, analysis, doc, every little thing. Yeah. Okay, so here's an analogy that Mark Lack and I like to use. We say prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. Right? Prescription before a diagnosis is malpractice. What does that mean? It means people are jumping straight to action Without having, like, imagine if you said that, you said before, like, you had a pinched nerve in your, yeah, in my back, in your back, whatever. And I and without doing any kind of MRIs or x rays or scanning, I said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and start doing some surgery. I can fix that. What do you say? I'd say pretty good, on. huh? Nah, let's hold on a minute. <laughs> and, and how likely would you guys be willing to let a surgeon, let's say I put on a beautiful white lab coat, if I'm not actually a surgeon, and uh -huh. I and you came and you came into my, Let's let's say that this video studio was a hospital. I pretended like it was. I got the uh, what's that Milton Bradley operation thing where you have to do the thing yeah. with the tweezers, and if you touch the edge, it goes eh. Yeah. So operation. How likely would you be willing to go with the surgeon's recommendation 
that they didn't do any diagnostics. They didn't do any, they didn't take your blood. They didn't do an x-ray. They, didn't, they just came in and you said, oh my, I have, I have chest pain. And like, cool, heart surgery. Let's just do a heart operation heart right now. But maybe that spicy taco you had for lunch, maybe that, maybe that's the issue. You don't need heart surgery. You just right. need Pepto-Bismol, right? right? So I know, I know it's kind of, I'm making fun of this thing, but here's the really important point. Metrics to analysis to action. So the, this framework you must always follow from metrics to analysis to action. In other words, collect the vitals. First step, right? The vitals are the metrics. That means the blood pressure and the x-rays and like all this stuff, right? Analysis is the diagnosis. Well, Jacob, we took the x-rays and it looks like according to this that, you know, your spine has got something wrong and that's why you have your pinched nerve. Like we can clearly see, right, on the on the chart, like we can see that's what's going on. Right. And then the action, the treatment plan is therefore we're going to do some acupuncture or therefore we're going to do. And so the therefore is because of the analysis. The analysis is the if and the action is the then. So metrics to analysis to action, you should write this down. It's the same as the vitals to the diagnosis to the treatment plan. You understand that medical terminology, the vitals to the analysis, sorry, to the diagnosis, to the treatment plan. If you follow this, which is metrics analysis action, you follow this, you will cut through your issues like a hot knife through butter. When you're presented with a large number of numbers, this giant spreadsheet of numbers, I'm going to cut right through that saying, okay, there's the metrics, but it's missing some of these key metrics because I don't see the counterbalancing metrics and I don't see the analysis associated with it. I want to be able to see, for example, the guy who's managing our PPC as an example, but use it for whatever thing you're looking at. I want to be able to see what they're doing and why they're doing it. So if I see the number of cases went up from December to January, let's say we went from 35 cases to 50 cases from January, 2022 to, to I'm sorry, December, 2022, right? To January, 2023. Sure. We went up from 35 to 50. Can I say, ta-da, our marketing's doing better, right? Mm, let's find out why. Well, maybe it's seasonality. Maybe there are fewer car accidents in December. Maybe I'm a weight loss, maybe I'm a coach. And in January, I, I get more clients because in December, people are partying and getting fat. And, you know, in, in January, it's like New Year's resolutions. I want to work on my business and, you know, whatever it is. So that's like the Christmas tree farm saying, well, I sold more Christmas trees in December than I did in January. That means I'm doing a really good job, right? I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. So understand that there's a linkage in what causes numbers to go up and down. And the thing that causes them to go up and down is the analysis. That's the needle in the haystack. That's understanding why. Why did a number go up or down? Anytime I look at a set of numbers, I'm always saying, why? My CTR went up. Why? I have 10 TikToks and one did better than the other. Why? Why? And if I can't tell, then we create a hypothesis and we guess at this. And we look at the data to be able to validate that hypothesis that we have. It's called the scientific method. Anyone who's a scientist understands this. So if we start at the top level, we have profit. Profit breaks down into decomposing metrics, which are diagnostic metrics, diagnostic metrics and pairs. Then I can take this tree all the way down and trace it down to the particular item. It could be the ad, it could be a post, it could be a referral from somebody. Could, you know, Maybe somebody on LinkedIn wrote about me or something, right? And that caused more people to wanna to connect with me, which drove me more clients. Like you can always trace it back, but the data that you need might not be in that spreadsheet. In fact, it usually isn't. So when you look at a spreadsheet, that's really just a starting point on where you need to investigate next. And you need someone who can think the AI can't do this part yet. Yet. To be able to figure out what step do I need to take next? So a lot of folks think that analytics is this math, like algebra calculation, rain man, you know, the formulas are like floating. You know, you know, like with these, these guys are like writing on the glass, these yeah. like huge, like calculus, they, 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 that's what they think analytics is. Yeah. Like you got to be this math person. No, no, no. Analytics is what we do as, as business owners at the strategy level. Analytics is a strategy issue, not a data issue. Isn't that interesting? And most people, they're, they shy away from analytics. I'm hoping that what I'm telling you about metrics analysis action, where you're looking at data and you're looking at your main business goal, sales, and see it go up or down. You're asking, why did it go up or down? Do I have the supporting data? Right. to be able to tell me why, not just because it went up because 
seasonality or because the competitor lowered their price or be, there's all these other reasons that you have to take into account. It's always multifaceted. That's the thing about analytics. So if anyone is giving you analytics or claiming to give you analytics, 99% of the time they're not. So the number one mistake that people make in analytics, you ready? Is believing they're doing analysis when really they're just snowing with a bunch of metrics. metrics. They're just giving you a sheet of numbers. It's not analytics. You know the biggest fraud out there? I'll show you what it is. It's like the fog before the storm. Oh, there's there's a ton of stuff. And <laughs> this this is from I am I'm qualified to say this because I built the analytics in the search engine. <laughs> and those people went from my team to go work at this Google one and then Google IPO'd and these people made a lot of money. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go, let's go look at the thing that is not analytics. Okay. All right. You guys see this? What what is uh what is this thing here called? What is what tool are we in right now? You guys see that? What tool is? I don't got a lot of tabs open. What's this called? Yes, Google. Yeah. Google Analytics. Is it? It's Google <laughs> Analytics. Hey, let me ask you guys. Is there any analytics in Google Analytics? <laughs> what do you guys think? We're in Google Analytics. Is there analytics in Google Analytics? <laughs> No, there's not. Okay. No. Okay. no, no. no. Yeah, there's, yeah, that's right, David. It's just go. metrics. Okay. But it sounds good to say there's analytics. See, you know what they should do? They should rename this thing to Google Charts. They you already call. got sheets. That's why. Yeah. Google <laughs> Report Maker. <laughs> <laughs> I built a career making spreadsheets like this. I mean, I'm telling you, there's no one, there's no analysis here. I promise you, there's a zero. Then what's the value? Well, there is value. I mean, I'm, I can analysis. see like what's going on here. Let's, yeah. let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go look at our reports. Right. Let's see acquisition, twenty one thousand users. Okay. Now remember, what did we say when we're looking at data? What are the first things that we do? Counterbalance. Or after before counterbalance. Or after. Counter oh, so so this. Let's just give. Let me give some context. I asked a trick question. So right now we are looking at a friend of mine's site, Ringba. Harrison Gewurz. He started with me when he was. 14 he's 30 now he's been yeah. with me for 16 years and we had we had dinner at the at the aria we we ate at at some place you can't even have why is this not even showing up here oh it takes three months to have reservations of, why is this not showing up in here anyway whatever we had dinner in vegas a couple of days ago okay and he owns this company and it's a call tracking it's a it's a paper called it's, it's so if you use tools like CallRail, which does call tracking, mm -hmm. this is like the premium version for people that pay for leads, okay. pay for calls. And so as a software company, as a SaaS company, he wants more people to sign up for his software. Right. Okay. And therefore he wants to rank on keywords that are related to call tracking software. So if we look at where the traffic comes from and we look at where people are coming, they're coming in on call tracking. And paper call and how's paper call work? Obviously, he's ranking on his own name and he's ranking on terms like paper call, right? And people are, of course, asking what's it cost and they're comparing Ringba versus the other competitors. Sure. The stuff you'd expect with software, right? And if I were to come here and look at Ringba and I see their top keywords, then I can see that I'm with DR66, not bad. 1300 keywords, not as many as we'd expect, but these are high power keywords that we're ranking on. We're not ranking on garbage keywords, okay? Right. Look, we're ranking on pay per call, number, number one, one in pay per call, number one in pay per call, pay, pay per call. By the way, this one here, pay per call, is a higher quality lead than pay per call. Just like people, when I told people what I did for a living, I did pay per click. They said, oh, pay per clips? You mean like staplers and paper clips and uh, you know ring binders? Ring binders. No, no, paper clips. Paper, pa clips. paper clicks. That's three words. Yeah, you know, Office Max, Office Depot. No, 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 not that. Not not paper clips. No. So you can see that like here, paper call marketing, how to call tracking, right? So these are these are important terms, and they have a lot of traffic, and of course the brand term carries a lot more traffic. Right. Right. So. When we're here inside Google Analytics and we're seeing where's the traffic coming from. By the way, this is GA4. Everyone you guys know are being forced in the GA4. So 
Google Universal Analytics is sunsetting. Everyone has to go into GA4, so you better learn how to use GA4 and set it up properly, which is a whole other thing I don't want to get into. But you can see where people are coming from other websites. They're typing it in, bookmark, right? Or it could be email. And we can see you know, what content people are engaging on. So we can look at you know these different pages. We can see, of course, they're coming to the home page. They're looking at you know, generating leads and enterprise call tracking. So you can see all this kind of stuff going on. But and, and you know, look, I can, there's so many different things. I see their top landing page, which is the first page they came in on, right? Well, not a surprise. They came in on the homepage or they, they look at the pricing. Of course, they're looking at demo. This is exactly what we'd expect. But then um, what is this? What is this telling me? So this, this is Google Analytics. Look, 32 people have come to the site in the last 30 minutes. Wow. Then I ask, so what? Right? That's the first question I look at this. I say, so what? So what relative to the business goal that I have? Right. What's my business goal? I want more people to sign up for the software. This is enterprise software. This is expensive. This is not signing up for you know a GoDaddy domain or something or buying one-click Amazon stuff, right? Right. I want to see what events I'm tracking here. So what are they doing? Well, they can scroll they can fill out a form to get a demo they can try the software right and see how many people have done this right and so this is like a tour of google analytics and you know we could look at any of these other guys as well so i could look at who do i want to look at you got some big big companies in rosetta stone i don't think they'd let me i don't think they'd want me to show their stats right now you know who they are they sell language software right right oh taco this is the um we man's chronic tacos Taco shop in LA. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wilshire Law Firm. I, they're, a, you know, this is one of our many accounts. We have so many accounts in here. It's incredible. Anyway, we're looking at live data. You never see anybody teach analytics from live data because they just teach PowerPoint and they just give you aphorisms instead of like actually applying this kind of stuff. Okay. So if I look at this data, and this is the last 28 days, but let's go back a little further. Let's go, let's go a year back. So we have 13 month, year over year, month over month. Oh, you know what? Oh, we moved to GA4 recently, so we don't have the data. It was in the old profile. But okay, so fine. Let's let's just say, let's say we have this data here and you're in charge of analytics and you're looking at this data. What, what do you want to do? What are you looking at? How are you interpreting this? How do you think about this? Um, let's see. What do you guys think? Or is this too geeky? I want to know, like, how do you guys... How do you guys feel about this? I really want you guys to understand the essence of analytics without getting too technical. Sure. What makes the number go up or down? Yeah. And, well, yeah. Trade shows is actually what makes the number go up and down. Where? So when they are the big sponsor, as they just were at this trade show in Las Vegas, and we're going to see them again in a couple of weeks. You should come out if you can. Th then more people are signing up. Right. But when they're signing up, they're coming by searching on Ringba, by searching on Adam, who's their figurehead, or Harrison, who's you know the other co-founder, but is more quiet about it. They're they're running ads. They're ranking on pay per call. Gee, if someone is is a personal injury attorney and they're trying to generate more cases and they they're willing to pay for right. calls, they're willing to pay for those leads. Mm -hmm. They might use Ringba software or a vendor that's using Ringba, right. that wants to be able to sell leads and they need software to be able to track that, then they're going to search and see the competitors and then they're going to find that Ringba is a competitor and then they're going to come in and we'll see that they came in through a referral, right? Which is like someone else's website. Like maybe right. somebody blogged about, here's the three different kinds of paper call software and Ringba is the number one, right? I'm biased because they're a client of ours, full <laughs> disclosure, right? So in order for me to do analysis here, I have to have the context of the strategy. If I do not understand what the client does, I could be the best analytics person on the planet. It won't matter. You have no analysis that way. That's right. Without strategy, there cannot be analysis. Strategy is goals, content, targeting. I need to have those building blocks. Right. Those are like the Lego blocks. Goals. I want more people signing up for the software at less than, say, $500 or whatever it is, right? Sure. Content. What's the content that shows that this is the best call tracking software? How do we buy phone numbers? How is it different than competitors? What are all the features? All the things that you want to know. Who are the customers that are using it? What industries are you are? What about uh, compliance issues with like 
medical and HIPAA, you know, whatever it is, and then targeting who's buying this. Not Sally Jane, who, you know, got a flower shop, but people who are sophisticated lead gen guys where they have teams of people on the phones and they're buying and selling leads and they're running multiple channels. They have partners, VARs, all these other kinds of relationships. So I have to have the goals, content, and targeting. If I have the goals, content, and targeting, because then I know what a customer's worth, then and only then can I start to do analysis. So I challenge you guys, before I go further into this data, do you have a clear grasp of your goals, content, and targeting where you know exactly what a new customer is worth? And it's true. If you're doing coaching and consulting, I mean, some clients are worth more or less than others because you set a custom package for each one or whatnot, but you have to have a general idea. You can't just say, well, some clients are worth a hundred grand and some clients are worth a thousand. You can't do that. That's that's an easy escape. Right. You have to be able to say, on average, a customer is worth like this. Or you could say, customer A is worth 5,000, but customer B who has this problem, they're worth 10,000. Right. You have to be able to segment and put a number on it. Why is it important to put a number on what a goal conversion is worth? Uh, that way you have an idea on how much you're, the whole the whole purpose of the project is for is to for the company to generate revenue. Because we're spending money on ads. Because right. we're spending our time, which is money. Because we're spending, there's no such thing as free. SEO is not free. It takes time, right? Anything that you do takes time. Hanging out with Jacob and me and Mark Lack's personal branding accelerator costs you time. That's true. So you could be hanging with your kids. You could be eating ding-dongs. You could be watching Oprah. You could be playing Frisbee. Walmart is out of Frisbees. Can you believe that? There's all these things that you could be doing. So there's there's that you have to have the goals, content, and targeting to then be able to analyze what's occurring. And thus, people who believe that they're experts in SEO or social media or accounting software, whatever it is they think they're an expert in, if they don't know your strategy, meaning they don't know the cost that you that what a customer is worth and therefore what you're willing to pay for that new customer and the pain point that you solve and how you solve it and your reputation and be able to speak your business, your words as clearly as yourself, then they can't do analysis yeah, on your no business. Purpose. Doesn't matter how many years, like I can't do analysis on your business unless I understand and empathize, empathize like clearly with your strategy. You guys, you guys see that? Hopefully that opens up some of these light bulbs where okay. Anyone that would love to give you advice, you instantly disqualify them because they don't know your strategy. That's the main point I wanted to make before we go further in these other pieces. I And I think, you know, analytics is the kind of thing where I could talk about it for like eight hours, but I want to make sure that you guys, want to take Q&A for a few more minutes? Sure. You got to run? Yeah, I'm about to run a couple okay. minutes. All right, we'll do a few more minutes here. And then I'm I'm going to run. So what do you guys... I'd love to hear some questions now. Just go ahead and, and holler them out or you can put them into the chat. Goals, content, and targeting. That's right, Al. That is what we call strategy. You know what? I'm going to give you guys a special gift. So just while you're typing in your questions, I want to give you guys a special gift because we're going to leave in a few minutes. But I think this is going to be one of our most valuable sessions. My hope is that less time, more value, right? Okay, so we have in our academy a course. It's called Optimization. And this goes into more detail on how we do, there's a micro, the micro courses are for the VAs. It's kind of like the cheat sheet to what are the dummies guide kind of, right? And where is this? I must've passed it. It's called MAA, Metrics Analysis Action. Here it is, okay? This course is $189. And as you can see, it is a deep course. 366 people have taken it. There's these different modules. It goes through all this, which you can see once you come in. And anyone who sends a note to Stephanie at blitzmetrics.com and has a subject line, I love Jacob Hastings, will get this course for free. We will give it to you for free, but you have to, today's Tuesday, February 28th. You have to do it by midnight tonight, Pacific time. So send an email to stephanie at blitzmetrics.com, subject line, I love Jacob Hastings, and in the body, or say, welcome Jacob Hastings, because this is his, we're hazing him on his first day of the job. <laughs> and yeah, in the body, say, I want the MAA course on how to optimize. And it goes into lots of detail. I think there's dozens of hours of videos going to lots of examples of this here. I'm giving it to you guys for free. Okay. 
What came after Jacob? Hmm? I don't know. That name. Oh, Jacob Hastings. Yeah. Hastings, okay. like the store. Yeah. All right. You want to take a question or two? Sure. Okay. See what they do. You guys like that? I'm giving away our stuff. How can that? You can't get better than that, right? I'm not even selling anything. No. Yep. When you find one of them that you can interview just for 10 minutes on Zoom or whatever, that creates authority because you're co-creating content with that yeah. person. And then you're promoting that person saying, yeah. you know, Jacob Hastings is sharing how you as a 23-year-old can start a social media agency, learn from him, you know, whatever it might be. And so you're elevating other people, just like you see Mark and I were constantly elevating these other people from your public figure pages where you're sharing your praise, sharing this knowledge. It's not all about you. It's when other people talk about you that builds your personal brand, which is kind of weird because in reverse, you're building your brand by talking good about other people. And then when they talk about you, that's what builds your brand, not because you're talking about yourself. So even if you're new, don't worry about this whole thing with like lots of public figure pages and websites and all that. Just make sure that you have Kim Harris claimed on every single social network. And then you are publishing that same content where you're sharing your expertise. And ideally you're, you're also sharing co-created content with other people that are authoritative, especially the group leader. Find the other Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, Twitter groups, whatever. It's not just a Facebook strategy. But other people who are authoritative, where if they're a fan of that person or a member of this particular group, they're also a great candidate for the coaching or what you have to offer. And then you start to share more of that. And people see, wow, Kim's with so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, right? I can see Kim's with Zena and Art and Bally. Like, I can definitely trust her. And I'm, you know, I've been thinking about it. I need to hire her, have a conversation to see whether she can help me. Not only that, she can also use the interviews between her and the other people in the groups as mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. free yeah. small contents and proof that she is who she says she is. Yeah. And then dollar a day is how you boost that. Yeah. So you can dollar a day on YouTube is my favorite place to actually do dollar a day. Actually, Twitter and YouTube are my two favorite places. Facebook's still kind of good. Excellent. Thank you we've lost that. detail targeting, but yeah. Let's take another question. And happy to do it next week too, if you guys want. We're going to be in, I don't know, San Antonio or Vegas or someplace like that. Yeah, we can take it down there. Speaking this weekend at the National Speaker Association. So a, a huge room full of people who speak professionally. I'm the keynote speaker. <laughs> I'm going to get judged. Oh, boy. Questions? You guys are awesome. Bring them. Is it Alum? You have, looks like you have a question. No, you're just thinking. You're just scratching your arm. Okay. All right. Top three courses, dollar a day personal branding, and one-minute video. Those are the three. That's kind of like the trinity of digital marketing. Don't cancel me for saying that. <laughs> All right, guys. Yep. I, I hope you enjoyed our session on optimization. I hope it showed you that it was about strategy and not about data. And most of what you see in Google Analytics is not analytics. Analytics is understanding why. Why can only be possible when you're starting with your business metric, which is tied to revenue. The number one metric that doesn't have a counterbalance metric is profit. Any metric can be broken down into diagnostic metrics, which have counterbalancing metrics. And when you ask why, you'll always figure out what the underlying needle in a haystack reason is. So you are in charge of your optimization and only you can, unless you have other people that understand your strategy. So don't be persuaded or be convinced by someone who says they can increase one metric without understanding the calendar bouncing metric. Mm -hmm. So next time you look at a big spreadsheet of data, it, oh, Dennis was saying, yeah, yeah, we need to look at the counter balancing metrics. We need to be able to see, you know, is, is this, is there enough data for me to diagnose? Or someone's telling me they increase this one metric, but I, I want you now to be thinking when anytime you see a whole bunch of numbers, oh, remember what we we're talking about right. with analytics. Right. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. If you want to do it next week, let me know. Hopefully it's not too much for you guys. Love Thanks you all. Checking in.